Welcome to today's video where I'm going to be showing you the best 12 formulas that you simply need to know in Smartsheet. Now I use Smartsheet on a day-to-day -day basis to manage my projects and these are all formulas that I use very, very regularly. So they are very important that you kind of understand how they work, how to set them up and how to use them. Now, for the purpose of this tutorial, I've created a quick dummy data sheet, very basic, just gives some kind of data that we can use to show you what these formulas look like and how to kind of build them out. Now, just for data confidentiality, I've set up a brand new free trial. I can't really reveal my organization's data here today. So that's why you can see this top left, but that won't change anything. You're still gonna get access to the top 12 formulas. Now. I've also created, and what we're going to be doing here is I'm going to be walking you through each of the 12 formulas. I'm going to be discussing a description of what that formula is and what it does. I'm then going to be showing you the syntax, or in other words, how to build it out. And then we'll be doing a kind of real, real time example of building that formula out. And as you can see, everything's completely blank, or is it? What I've done is I've just put everything in white text. I'm going to be revealing each one one by one to build some anticipation and excitement for each formula. Try and make it a little bit fun. So first, the first formula, you can probably imagine what it is going to be, and it is a VLOOKUP. Now I'm sure you've used VLOOKUPs in Excel. Maybe you haven't. Either way, they are very, very valuable. And what they enable you to do is they enable you to look up for a piece of information from an existing table or data set and then extract that information from it. So when it comes to building it out, this is essentially what you need to do. So all formulas, just as in Excel, all formulas in Smartsheet need to start with equals. So this is basically the logic that you need to input into the formula in order for, you know, in order for you to, to, to get the result you're looking for. So that all might seem a little bit complex, not, not, not to worry, let's actually build this out. So equals VLOOKUP, and as you'll see, it kind of shows you, when you start searching for a, a formula, you'll have a, the, the system will try to recognize what formula you, you're looking to build. And if you see it, you can kind of left click and that's gonna set it up for you, or you can also hit return, and that's gonna basically enable you to select this formula. So equals VLOOKUP. Now, based on the dummy data sheet that I've already set up, I want to look for the term Apple. I know it's already in there. Obviously, this will differ depending on the sheets that you use and what you're looking to achieve. Now, with a VLOOKUP, you can look within a table within an existing sheet or another sheet that you've built. As I say, we've got a dummy data sheet that we want to pull it from, so I'm gonna select this option here. So I need to select my dummy data sheet. I'm going to select this column. The reference is fruit there. Hit insert reference. I've just gone over to the right a little bit there to make sure I'm, you know, the formula is setting up correctly. Now I need to select the column number. So if you selected multiple columns, you are basically specifying which column you want to pull the data from. This is column one. It's the only column I selected and then you just want to put in false. Now you have two options here, it'll either be false or true, but for the most part, you'll only need false. Just bear that in mind, hit return, and we've got Apple pulled back. It's looked for Apple, it can find Apple, so it's returned Apple. Now, if you want a further video and information on how to build or how to use VLOOKUPs in Smartsheet, I've got a separate video for that. So do check the link in the description if you want to know more. Next up, we have a count if. Now what a count if formula does is it counts the number of cells within a range that meet the criterion that you specify. So again, this is how you build it. Equals count if, you specify the range and then specify the criterion. So again, equals count if. And at this stage, you'll see there's two options. You've got a regular count if or a count ifs. Now the only difference is a count if is one condition and account ifs, you should use that if you have multiple conditions. But I'm just gonna show you count if for now. So the range, so I'm gonna select again, we'll use fruit again, insert reference. 
So basically what I'm saying here is, you know, how many apples are in that column? And it's one. If there was, if that column had the word apple five times, then this formula would return five. You get the idea. Following on, we have SUMIF. Now, what a SUMIF does is instead of counting the number of cells, it adds all the numbers within a range that meet a specified criterion. So again, it looks very, very similar in terms of the syntax. And if we are to build it, again, you'll notice we have the SUMIF or some ifs option, the latter, which you should use for multiple conditions. But if we're doing a SUMIF, let's reference another sheet. This time if we select quantity, so let's say we want to count all the numbers if they're greater than four, for instance, you know, if there's, if there's a number greater than four, what's the total? So what we would do here is do greater than four. Oh, that was three, 35. So basically that's counted everything in the quantity column based on that formula we set up. Next up, we have if error. Now, what an if error does is it returns it returns the value that you specify if there isn't an error, or otherwise it will basically return a second value that you specify. So let's just show you the syntax of how to build it. So equals if error. So let's say the value is, let's just put in here for now. So I'm going to click that cell just to specify that. So if it is an error, then I want you to say needs attention. But as you can see, there's no error in this cell. So it's going to return what we've specif specified in the first part of the formula. Now, there's various different errors in Smartsheet. I've just opened up a separate resource here. This is on one of the help uh, articles by Smartsheet. And you've got all of the different um, errors that can happen in Smartsheet when you're using other formulas. So an, an if error is, is basically a formula you use on a formula. Sounds complex, doesn't it? But if you get any of these, if you experience any of these results when you, you know, set up a formula and then run an if error on that column, then this would basically enable you to add some texturing such as this needs attention. You know, there's, there's an error here. Next up, we have average. So all this is doing is it's going to return the average or the mean of provided numbers. So very simple equals average, what the number one is and what number two is. So I already put something in here. So let's put in in here one and five. So equals AVG open bracket. Number one is going to be here. And number two is going to be here. Three. Three is the average between the numbers one and five. You get the idea. Number six is the find formula. So what this essentially does is it returns the starting position or the number of characters in a string within text. So if I show you what this looks like, so that will kind of help explain it. So equals find Let's say we want to search for, you know, the letter D in this text string. So D. Now the text to search is here. So we, you specify the field, close bracket. And I need that in black. Two. So what this is saying is the, the first, the first times it, the first time it finds the letter D is the second, you know, character along. So that can be useful if you know what you want to, to look within a particular um, field of text, you know, the first time you, you, you know, the first time it's mentioned or the first time it can be found. Number seven is join. So what this, this is very, very useful. So this basically enables you to combine cells together um, and then you can have like spaces or, you know, um, asterisks or anything in between that, you know, to separate them out. Um, so this is what it looks like. So, so equals join and then the range. So let's say we want to join these two cells together 
or the, these two kind of words. So I've selected the range. And then the delimiter is essentially, you know, do you want it to have a space? Do you want it to just be together? You know, let's just say we don't want anything like that. we we'll just close it off. So we've got find join. But if we wanted a delimiter, so let's say we wanted a space, I'm going to literally put that in brackets and you'll see we have the space. Next up, network day. So this is very clever. So what this basically does is it returns the number of working days between two dates. So all you need to do to build that is specify the start date and the end date or and any holidays in between. So in order for me to do this, let me just wipe these out. And that's gonna mess this up, isn't it? Um, so you, you saw an error there actually. Maybe I should go back. So if I select this here, you've got needs attention. So there you go, perfect example. So there we go, we can see the if error in greater detail there and how it kind of works. But let's go back to network day. So we're gonna make, um, I'm actually gonna add a new column for this because we need we need date columns. So if I do date, restricted dates, okay. And then I'll just put this down here to get it out. Actually, no, let's put it in, in this one. Uh, no, because I need two dates, sorry, excuse me. Right, we need, let's say today and tomorrow, today and tomorrow. So the network days, actually that's not a very good example because it's a Friday and a Saturday. Let's put, let's put Monday the 25th and you know, the fourth there. So equals network days between the start date, which is the 25th of October and the end date, which is February the 4th. And it's told us that there's 75 network days in between, or working days, so that's only counting between Monday and Friday, between those two dates. So it can be really, really useful if you want to, you know, you're working on schedules or you're working on, um, you know, uh, who's working on what. Let's actually put those back. So number nine is replace. Now this can be very, very useful if you've got a load of, um, you've got a column with a lot of errors in and you want to or in text and you want to update them all in one formula. So what this basically does is it enables you to replace um, characters that you specify. So what that looks like is, you know, there's quite a few conditions on this formula that, that you need to set up. But if I give you a quick example, so to do this, I'm actually going to spell hello wrong here just before. So equals replace. So we want to replace any time we see an incorrect spelling of hello. The start position is essentially the character starting. So let's put one for, for now. So that'll be the H. Um, then we need the number of characters. So I think this would be five. And then we want to replace it with the correct use of the term. So if I drag this down now, this should update to hello, as you can see. So that can be handy if you've got, you know, a load of incorrect text in a column and you don't want to update them one by one. So just bear that in mind. So number 10, we have small. So what this basically does is, as, as the name suggests, returns the lowest number it can find within a range. So very simple to set up, just to specify the range. Um, and, and you have it. So let's put some numbers in down here. Two, three. So equals small. So the range would be this here and a number representing the position. So from the lowest to return. So let's put one. So and it brings back one. If we put this as two, you'll notice that this changes. So it's only going to bring back two. So basically this number here represents the lowest number that you want to basically specify. So say you've got a, num a, a, a column full of numbers from between one and 500. If you only wanted it to bring back something under, you know, 25, then you just put say, or 25 in here. That's not going to work in this example, but you get the idea. You can probably imagine what comes next, large. So very, in, in many ways, this is just the opposite of what we've just discussed. Um, so if I build this out again, so equals large, select the range, 
and we want to put this as three or one I should say because obviously it works in reverse okay now the last formula that we're going to cover today and what I'd recommend getting familiar with is substitute so what this, this is quite clever this basically enables you to replace text with new text in a string if you've got you know something that you want to update in uh, in bulk so this is what it looks like but I think again it's probably best to just run through the example so equals substitute now we're going to set something up where if we put so we're going to change this word um, so the old text would be this and the new text is going to be high so if I then change put the end the end in parenthesis on there so as you can see every time there's it sees by if we in, in, a, in a cell and we drag the column down this should update to high so you get the kind of idea in this example what I'm trying to do here and as you can see it's kind of updated so it's just substituting text out from one thing to another but it's really useful if you've got a lot of data that needs updating so they are the best 12 formulas in my experience I use them all the time I would thoroughly recommend becoming familiar with them if this video was useful, please do hit the like button. It tells me I should carry on creating videos like this and do subscribe to the channel if you want to learn more about Smartsheet or anything else project management related. So with that said, I hope you have an excellent day.